Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and I am in my car with my phone attached to my window. And I am trying to talk to you about the theatre of the mind. Um, it's been around a while. Um, it's probably the catchphrase for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And I have to say that it's been very useful to me and I know a lot of my players uh, like it and I know a few of my Dungeon Master friends like it too. Uh, I don't think it was really called Theatre of the Mind back when it was first created. That just seems to be the catchphrase for now. So what's the deal with Theatre of the Mind? You use your imagination, uh, everything is up here in your head, you don't use a grid, you don't use miniatures, you don't use figures, and you just have to try to remember everything in your head, which sounds great, and it's certainly very quick. Uh, it's not very easy to do sometimes. It's very difficult as a dungeon master to communicate everything clearly to your players so they know where everything is and what's going on and then remember where everybody is in relation to a, a creature or a monster or an NPC uh, or a number of NPCs or monsters. Uh, it's really difficult for players to get their heads around this sometimes. They struggle. I find it uh, more frustrating um, to see that they, they are frustrated rather than getting annoyed with them because they say, look, I just want a grid so I can see everything. It's just too hard to imagine in my mind. So I thought I would explain to you when I use theatre of the mind. So one, I will use theatre of the mind when there is one monster and I don't have to really worry too much about the relationship of where the monster is compared to where the player's character is. Uh, if that's the case, then I will use Theatre of the Mind. Another time that I will use, or the second time I tend to use Theatre of the Mind, is when I just don't care about the outcome of the combat. It's just there uh, just to give them something to do. Uh, another time that I will tend to use Theatre of the Mind is when I just cannot be bothered pulling the miniatures out and drawing a grid or a map or anything like that. I am extremely lazy as a dungeon master, I have limited time, and so as a result, I will do anything that will shorten my workload. <laughs> so, um, yes, I don't care, don't have time, then I will just not worry about it, and I use theatre of the mind. Uh, now, I have developed a few tricks for how to get players to accept that, because sometimes it doesn't work. I always bring my miniature box and my map. And I will put it out. I will actually lay the map out. <laughs> Sorry. I will lay the mat out. And I will have the pens out. Even laid out. Ready to go. But I have no intention of using them. <laughs> They're just there. It's a psychological um, sort of uh, buffer. Uh, basically. To, to sort of, you know, alleviate the player's um, concern that they may find that I do something that is um, unfair and because they couldn't see the exact relationship between their monster and their character when they cast a spell or when they shot an arrow or made an attack or anything like that. There's a lot of trust required between um, dungeon master and player when you're using theater of the mind and I will have those miniatures there. So if they start saying, oh Fred are we going to use the grid and the miniatures? And I'll, if I say no and they like start getting upset then I can pull them out. But if they don't say anything and they seem to sort of like to look like they can live with it, then I'll just keep going and I just don't use the grid and the miniatures and I just use theatre of the mind. I find that works really, really well. And maybe you can use that in your game when you're trying to use theatre of the mind. Just bring the grid and the, and, and the miniatures along uh, or whatever tokens or pawns or whatever you're using. And then uh, if you uh, so run your combat, and when it comes to actually laying things out, just don't lay anything out. Just describe it as you go. Um, I find this works really, really well. I have to say that uh, when things get complicated in terms of lots of monsters and creatures, um, using uh, theatre of the mind is really not helpful. But I don't necessarily mean that you should have to use theatre of the mind um, or the grid. You, there are so many different ways you can lay out and demonstrate to people where things are, you can just use a piece of paper and draw stuff out. Um, but theatre of the mind is good for being quick and fast and, and moving things along. And um, there's where the benefit lies. Look, if you found this video helpful or informative, uh, please share, like and subscribe. 
I know the quality of my video is not very great, um, just bear with me, it will hopefully get better. I now have at least my phone, I'm not holding it, it's now attached to a window. <laughs> anyway, make a comment below if you have any questions about Theatre of the Mind and how to actually get your players to accept using it, or give me some feedback about what you do. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s. Now, I would have a 20 in my hand, but I don't have one in the car. <laughs>